We continue with the reading of Holy Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, to request divine union, the Holy Spirit, theosis with our Lord Jesus Christ. And this usually takes a year to read the Holy Bible, two chapters of the Old, one chapter of the New Testament, but we're going twice as fast. We're reading four chapters of the Old, two chapters of the New. And we're on um, the book of Exodus, which is the second book of the Holy Bible, chapter 37. The Tabernacle of Testimony. Now they made ten curtains for the tabernacle. The length of one curtain was 28 cubits, and thus it was for all of them. And the width four cubits. They made the veil of blue, purple, spun scarlet, and fine twined linen, a work woven with cherubim. And they put it on the four posts of incorruptible wood overlaid with gold. And their capitals were gold, and their four bases were silver. For the tabernacle of testimony, they made the veil of the door purple, blue, spun scarlet, and fine twined linen, a woven work with cherubims. They made its five posts with their rings, and, their gilded, and they gilded their capitals and bands with gold, but their five bases were bronze. Then they made the cord towards the south, and its curtains were of fine twined linen, 100 cubits symmetrically. There were 20 posts for them with 20 bases. On the north side, they were a hundred cubits symmetrically. One on the south side, they were on the south side. They were hundred cubits symmetrically, with their twenty posts and twenty bases. On the west side, they were curtains of fifty cubits with their ten posts and twenty bases. On the east side, they were curtains of fifty cubits with their curtain on the one side of the court entrance of fifteen cubits. That's why. Um, Okay, the, on the east side, there were curtains of 50 cubits with one curtain on one side, entrance of 50 cubits, 15 cubits, with its three posts and three bases. On the other side of the court, entrance of 15 cubits with three posts and bases. All the curtains of the court were of fine twine linen. The bases of the posts were bronze. The hooks of the posts were silver, and their capitals were overlaid with silver, and all the posts of the court were overlaid with silver. The veil of the court entrance was a woven work of blue, purple, spun scarlet, and fine twined linen. Its length was 20 cubits, and its height or width was 5 cubits, corresponding with the curtains of the court. There were four posts and bases for the veil, made of bronze, with their hooks of silver and their capitals overlain with silver. The pegs all around the court were made of bronze and overlain with silver. So this was the construction of the Tabernacle of Testimony, as it was commanded to Moses for the service of the Levites through Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest. Bazalel, the son of Uri, and the tribes of Judah did as the Lord commanded Moses. There was Aholiab, the son of Ahishashamach, of the tribe of Dan, who was a master workman of a woven and needlework in the scarlet and fine linen. Making of the Ark, chapter 38. Now Bezalel made the ark. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out. He cast for it four golden rings, two rings on one side, two rings on the other, wide enough for the poles with which to carry it. He also made the mercy seat above the ark of pure gold and two cherubim of pure gold, a cherubim at the end of the mercy seat, at one end of the mercy seat and one at the other end, spreading out their wings above the mercy seat. The table of offering. Then he made the table of offering of pure gold and cast for it four rings, two on one side, two on the other, wide enough for the poles with which to carry it. Then he made the poles of the ark and the table and gilded them with gold. And he also made the utensils of the table and dishes and censers, the cups and the pitchers for pouring drink offerings of gold. Then he made the lampstand to give light of gold both its solid stem and the branches on each side thereof, and the blossoms projecting from its branches, three on one side and three on the other, symmetrical to one another. As to the lamps on top of them, almond blossoms budded from them, and there were sockets to hold the lamps, the seven of which was atop a lampstand itself, at its summit all of solid gold. The seven lamps, their snuffers, their funnels, were also made of gold. The altar... Then he overlaid the posts with silver and cast golden rings for the posts, and he gilded the posts supporting the veil with gold and made the hooks of gold. 
He also made the rings of the tabernacle of gold and the rings of the court and those for drawing out the veil above he made of bronze. He then cast in silver in capitals of the tabernacle and in bronze the capitals of the door of the tabernacle and the gate of the court, and he made silver hooks to be able to attach to the posts. He made of bronze all the pegs of the tabernacle in the court. He made the altar of bronze for, from the censers used by the men engaged in Korah's rebellion. He made of bronze all the utensils of the altar and also its gate, its base, its bowls, and the flesh hooks. As an appendage to the altar, he made a network under the grate, beneath it as far as the middle of it, and he fastened four rings of bronze to the four sides of the appendage, wide enough for the bar so as to carry the altar with them. He also made a holy anointing oil and the composition of the incense, the pure work of the perfumer. A laver of bronze. He made a laver of bronze and its base of bronze from the bronze mirrors of the women who fastened uh, who fasted by the doors of the tabernacle of witness on the day he set it up. He made the laver that in it Moses and Aaron and his sons might wash their hands and feet. Whenever they went into the tabernacle of testimony or came near to minister to the altar, they washed in it as the Lord commanded Moses. The use of the offerings, chapter 39. Now all the gold used in the production of the holy places was that of the offerings, 29 talents and 720 shekels, according to the holy shekel. The offering of the silver from the numbered men of the congregation was 100 talents and 1,775 shekels, one drachma per head being a half shekel, according to the holy shekel. For everyone surveyed in the tally from 20 years old and up to the number of 603,550, the three the, the hundred talents of silver were used to cast the one hundred capitals of the tabernacle and the capitals of the veil, a hundred capitals to the hundred talents, a talent to a capital. Then from the one thousand seven hundred and seventy-five shekels he made hooks for the posts, gilded their capitals, and decorated them. The bronze from the offering was seventy talents and a thousand five hundred shekels, and with it they made the bases for the doors of the tabernacle of testimony. The bases for the court all around, the bases for the court gate, the pegs for the tabernacle, the pegs for all around the court, the bronze appendage for the altar, all the vessels of the altar, and all the instruments of the tabernacle of testimony. So the children of Israel did as the Lord commanded, thus they did. Also the gold that remained from the offering, they made vessels with which to minister before the Lord. The remaining blue, purple, and scarlet cloth they made into liturgical vestments for Aaron, to minister in them in the holy place. Presentation to Moses. So they brought to Moses the garments, the tabernacle and all the vessels, the bases and their bars, the posts, the Ark of the Covenant and its poles, the altar and all its vessels, the anointing oil, the incense compound, the pure lamp and its lamps, building lamps for burning, the oil for light, the lamp, the table of offering, and the bread set forth upon it and all its utensils, the garments of the holy place, which belonged to Aaron and his sons for ministering as priests, the curtains of the court and their posts, the veil of the door for the door of the tabernacle, the court gate and all the utensils of the tabernacle and all its instruments, the ramskins dyed red, the blue coverings and the other coverings, the pegs and all the instruments for the work of the tabernacle of testimony, whatever things the Lord commanded Moses, thus the children of Israel made, and prepared in every respect, then Moses looked over all the work, and it was done in the manner the Lord commanded Moses. They did it in this way, and Moses blessed them. Chapter 40 Setting up the Tabernacle Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On the first day of the first month, the new moon, you shall set up the Tabernacle of Testimony. You shall put in it the Ark of the Testimony, and cover the Ark with the veil. You shall bring in the table, and lay out its offering and bring in the lampstand, and in install its lamps. You shall also set the altar of gold for the incense before the ark, and put up the veil for the door of the tabernacle of testimony. Then you shall set the altar of the burnt offering before the door of the tabernacle of testimony. You shall pour a cover over the tabernacle, and concentrate everything pertaining to it. You shall take the anointing oil, and anoint the tabernacle, and everything in it. You shall consecrate it, and all its utensils, and it shall be holy. You shall anoint the altar of burnt offerings 
and all the utensils, and consecrate the altar. The altar shall be most holy. Entrance of the priests. Then you shall bring Aaron and his sons to the doors of the tabernacle of testimony, and wash them with water. You shall put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint and consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. You shall also bring his sons and put garments on them. You shall anoint them as you anointed their father, so they may minister to me as priests. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood throughout their generations. Thus Moses did according to all the Lord commanded him, so he did. The work is finished. Then it came to pass in the first month of the second year after their departure from Egypt. On the first day of the month, the tabernacle was set up. So Moses set up a tabernacle, placed the capitals, inserted the bars, and set up the posts. He spread out the curtains over the tabernacle and put the veil of the tabernacle on, the, on it above, as the Lord commanded Moses. Then he took the testimonies, put them into the ark, and inserted the poles under the ark. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle, hang up the veil of covering of the covering, and, and partitioned off the ark of the testimony, as the Lord commanded Moses. He put the table in the tabernacle of testimony on the north side of the tabernacle of testimony outside the veil of the tabernacle. He also set the bread of the offered offertory upon it before the Lord in the manner the Lord commanded Moses. Then he put the lampstand in the tabernacle of testimony on the south side of the tabernacle and he placed its lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. He also put the gold altar in the tabernacle of testimony to in front of the veil, and he burned the incense compound on it as the Lord commanded Moses. Then he put the altar of burnt offering before the doors of the tabernacle. He also set up the court all around the tabernacle and the altar, so Moses finished all the work. The overshadowing cloud. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of testimony, and the tabernacle was filled with the Lord's glory. But Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of testimony, because the cloud overshadowed it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud ascended from the tabernacle, the children of Israel prepared to depart with their belongings. But if the cloud did not ascend, they did not prepare to depart until the cloud ascended. For before all Israel, throughout all their journeys, the cloud was above the tabernacle by day and fire over it by night. And we'll continue with Leviticus starting next. And now we go to our New Testament. I just wanted to comment to you that this is the way the uh, Christian Orthodox churches are set up, always in this orientation. There are no churches that do not have this orientation. And they do have the bread offering to the north of the Holy of Holies. That's where they have the proscomidi that the um, priest prepares for uh, the bread offering for the uh, Holy Eucharist. Now, and, the, and also the Utensils and even their garments are blessed before they wear them, before uh, being worn as priests. The garments are worn by the priests. Um, now we go on to Mark chapter 15. Jesus before Pilate. Immediately in the morning, the chief priests at the consultation held a consultation with the, the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered and said to him, It is as you say. Then the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things that testify against you? But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. Now at the feast he was accustomed to releasing one prisoner to them, whomever they requested. And there was one named Barabbas, who was chained with his fellow rebels. They had committed murder in the rebellion. Then the multitude, crying aloud, began to ask him to do just as he had always done for them. But Pilate answered them, saying, Do you want me to release you to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that the chief priests had handed him over because of envy. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd, so that he should rather release Barabbas to them. Pilate answered and said to them again, what then do you want me to do with him, whom you call the king of the Jews? So they cried out again, Crucify him. Then Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? Then they cried out all the more, Crucify him. 
So Pilate wanted to gratify the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and he delivered Jesus after he had scourged him to be crucified. Mocked by soldiers. Then the soldiers led him away into, into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole garrison. And they clothed him with purple, and they twisted a crown of thorns, put it on his head, and began to salute him. Hail, King of the Jews! Then they struck him on the head with a reed, and spat on him, and bowed the knee. They worshipped, bowing the knee, they worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took a purple, the purple off him, but put clothes on him, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him. The Crucifixion. Then they compelled a certain man, Simon the Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus, and he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross. And they brought him to the place Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. And then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, King of the Jews. With him they also crucified two robbers, one on his right hand and the other on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled, which says, And he was numbered with the transgressors. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also mocked among themselves with the scribes, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross, that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him reviled him. Jesus dies. Now, when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. Six hour meaning noon, ninth, nine hour meaning three in the afternoon. So for three hours there was darkness. Um, now when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of those who stood by when they heard that said, look, he's calling for Elijah. Then someone ran and filled a sponge full of sour wine and put it, put it on a reed and offered it to him to drink, saying, Let him alone, let us see if Elijah will come to take him down. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice and breathed his last. Then the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. So when the centurion who stood opposite him saw that he cried out like this and breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from afar among whom were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and, and James the Less, and one of Jonah, Joseph and Salome, and also followed him and ministered to him when he was in Galilee, and many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem, the burial. Now when evening had come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a prominent council member, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God coming and taking courage, went into Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate marveled that he was already dead, and some of the centurion, he asked him if he had been dead for some time. So when he found out from the centurion, he granted the body to Joseph. Then he bought fine linen, took him down and wrapped him in the linen, and he laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out of the rock and rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. And Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jose observed where he, had, he was laid. The Empty Tomb, Chapter 16. Now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they may come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen, the first day of the week being um, Sunday, the Lord's Day. Um, very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen, and they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw 
a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee, and there you will see him, as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb. Galilee meaning little Galilee. It was the encampment that they had in the Mount of Olives opposite Jerusalem. The people of Galilee would have their encampment there. That's why they called it Galilee. So it wasn't the Galilee of uh, up, up, up high in the sea, in the, the sea of uh, Gesenaret. It was the Galilee opposite the um, uh, Jerusalem in the field of uh, the Mount of Olives. So they went out quickly and fled. That's, that's where the uh, um, assumption of Jesus Christ took place also. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb, for they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The risen Christ appears. Now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him, as they mourned and wept. And when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they did not believe. After that, he appeared in another form to two of them as they walked and went into the country. And they went and told to the rest, but they did not believe them either. And that was uh, St. Luke and St. Cleopas as they were walking on the road to Emus. Um, that's a lot in the Bible, but I, I know that that's why I'm putting it in here. We read it, we're going to read it, uh, we read it before. And we're going to read it again. Now, the Great Commission. Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be con condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will, be by, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, sick, and they will recover. The Ascension. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. And we continue with uh, uh, Luke, the Gospel of Luke. But I want to I want to read to you the uh, the writing in the Bible concerning Mary. For behold, henceforth all sh all generations shall call me blessed. Luke one forty eight. For two thousand years, the Church has preserved the memory of the Virgin Mary as the prototype of all Christians, the model of what we are to become in Christ. Mary was truly pure and unconditionally obedient to God. The tradition of the church holds that Mary remained a virgin all her life. See note on Matthew 24, 46. While lifelong celibacy is not a model for all Christians to follow, Mary's spiritual purity, her wholehearted devotion to God, is certainly to be emulated. Mary is also our model in that she was the first person to receive Jesus Christ. As Mary bore Christ in her womb physically, all Christians now have the privilege of bearing God within them spiritually. By God's grace and mercy, we are purified and empowered to become like him. The honor we give to Mary also signifies our view of who Jesus is. For early times, the church had called her mother of God, Theotokos, or God-bearer, a title which implies that her son is both fully man and fully God. As his mother, Mary was the source of Jesus' human nature, yet the one she bore in her womb was also the eternal God. Therefore, because of her character, especially because of her role in God's plan for, of salvation, Christians appropriately honor her, honor Mary as the first among the saints. The archangel Gabriel initiated this honor in his address to her. Rejoice, highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Luke one twenty eight. This salutation clearly indicates that God himself had chosen to honor Mary. He favored status, his, his favored stat, her favored status 
was confirmed when she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth, who was then six months pregnant with John the Baptist. Elizabeth greeted Mary with these words, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Luke 142. And Mary herself, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, predicted the honor that would be paid her throughout history. For behold, henceforth, all generations will call me blessed. Luke 148. In obedience to God's clear intention, therefore, the Orthodox Church honors Mary in icons, hymns, and special feast days. We entreat her as a human being who is most intimate with Christ on earth to intercede with her son on our behalf. We ask her as the first believer and the mother of the church for guidance and protection. We venerate her, but we do not worship her, for worship belongs to God alone. In matins, vespers, and the services of the honors of the hours we pray, we sing this hymn, which expresses Mary's unique place in creation. It is truly right to bless you, O Theotokos, ever blessed and most pure, and the mother of God, more honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compare than the seraphim. Without defilement you give birth to God, the word. True Theotokos, we magnify you. And we'll continue with the readings tomorrow in part 24. God bless you. Christ is risen, truly risen. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.